This is the uh, TCAP math test, so the practice test for eighth grade. Uh, this is question number 11. I'm going to try to do it a couple different ways, so I needed to do it using this method. It says, what is the value of y in the solution to the system of linear equations 8x minus 4y equals 28 and negative 3x plus 6y is equal to 12? I'm going to write those out a little bit bigger. So they're more functional to work with. And there's about a billion ways to do these problems, but uh, one of the ways you might want to try is to use substitution. So what I'm going to do is find x in terms of y and then plug it into the equation. So when I find x in terms of y, what that means is I'm going to pick one of the two equations and move some things around. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try to get y by itself. That way, in the equation above, I can plug this whole thing in for y, and then I'm good to go. So I need to get y by itself. I'm going to draw a line here, add 3x to both sides, because y wants to be alone. Cancel. Bring down everything, because these are not like terms. You can't bring them together. One has an X and one doesn't. It's like $5 bills and $1 bills. It's great if you're paying, or if you get back $5 bills instead of one, but if you're expected to give $5 bills instead of $1 bills, it's kind of a bad situation, so we just separate them. Now, everything has to be divided by this 6 now, because it's 6 times Y. So Y can also be written as 1 half X plus 2. So what I'm going to do with that information is go back into the original equation. 8x minus 4y equals 28. And I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. I'm going to do 8x minus 4 times 1 half x plus 2 equals 28. This will help me find x and then I can find y. You could have also just gotten y, x by itself there. That would have made a heck of a lot more sense. But it is what it is. I'm already into this, so I'm not going to change now. Um, do the distributive property first, so 4 times 1 half is 2, or negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2, x. Uh, negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. Now I'm going to combine 8x minus 2x, and that gives me 6x. Add 8 to both sides. I'm going to need two cards for this. Divide by 6. So x is equal to 6 in this equation. All I need to do to get the answer from here is just go back into either one, really. Let's go back into the original. And I'm going to plug in 6 for my x. And then just solve for y. This would be negative 18. I need to add 18 to both sides. Gives me 30. Divide by 6. Y is equal to 5. So the answer to number 11 is C. As you can see, there it is. Now, what if you hate that method? That's lame. I don't want to do it that way. I don't want to do substitution. I'm going to do something else. Well, good news. There's other things for you. In this case, what I want to do is try to um, eliminate you, uh, eliminate the x term completely and then just be left with the y term. It makes a nice, simple scenario. What I need to do here is make sure that what I have, um, when I combine them together, I kind of want to get rid of them. So if I were to put them over top of each other like an equation. In this case, 8 minus 3 would give me 5x. Well, negative 4 plus 6 would give me negative 2y. That doesn't really help, but I can make the problem work out for me very nicely by um, changing the x values so they eliminate. What I want them to do is be the same. You can try to do... Um, least common multiple stuff, but it's way easier just to choose them multiplied by each other. So what I'm going to do is take 8x minus 4y equals 28, and I'm going to multiply it 
by 3, because 8 times 3 will give me 24. Shockingly, I'm going to multiply this one by 8. So just whatever number is on front of the opposite one, multiply. So 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And 28 times 3 is 84. So that's the new equation I'm going to use. Now for the other one, the x thing, I'm going to multiply by 8. If they're different signs, you're going to have to multiply by a negative version of one of them. Or if they were the same sign, I'm sorry. You're trying to get rid of them. Or you could subtract, whatever you want to do. So this is my original. I'm going to multiply that by 8. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24x. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 12 is 96, yes. It's been a while. So I get these two equations, and I'm just going to put them on top of each other. I'll rewrite them out really fast so I have none, one nice statement to make. Now in my situation, I like to just cancel things out, but if you do like to subtract, like you want it to look like a nice equation, you did need to multiply by a negative 3 here. So it would have given you negative plus, and then you could subtract them out. I just like to look at things that can cancel, so I'm really adding in this situation. It's just a different way to look at it. You can get it the same way. That's like a personal quirk. So I know that 24, mi 24 minus 24 is this cancel. Negative 12 plus 48 gives me 36y. And 84 plus 96 is 180. And I'm going to divide, since it's times y, I'm going to divide by 36 on both sides, which was the worst 36 ever written at one point. I'm proud of that. And shockingly, I get y is equal to 5 which, as we said before, is the correct answer. Another way you could do it, like I said, there's tons of ways that you can do it, is to just graph them together. Now you can put them into slope-intercept form, or you could use, which would be um, moving the x over here, so you get negative 8x plus 28. This is after I already moved plus 8x. Then divide by negative 4. And you get y equals 2x minus 7 for the first one. For the second one, I'm going to add 3x. Because I'm trying to get y by itself, people. Divide by 6 everywhere. We looked at that before. Now, if I could graph these two, If I could graph these two things, I could just see where they intersect. So I go into the y, and I type in 1 half x plus 2, because that's what it said right there. As you can see, I put it right there. And then below, I do 2x minus 7. Then I can graph them. It looks really nice. There they are, they intersect right here. Well, is there an easier way that I can just see the number? Absolutely. You're going to go and use the table. So you hit second and then hit the graph button and it gives you the table. Most calculators will do this. And I'm going to look for a point where the y's are the same because that's where they intersect, right? Well, there we are. The y's are both the same at x is equal to 6 they're both 5. So the y that I'm looking for is 5. That's another way to do it. Like I said, there's a billion ways to do this question. And there's more than that. But these are the three I'm going to show you because I don't want to ramble on forever. Choose whatever method you like the best and just do that.